Okay, so next up in the series on service workers, I'm going to be talking about the storage API, storage estimates, how to find out how much storage is available in your current browser, um, how you can calculate the percentage of what you're using of that quota, which things fall into that storage, and how it varies a little bit between the different browsers. And we're also going to take a look at how we can leverage how much data we're using in the actual caches themselves. So I've taken um, the service worker that I used in the previous video on integrating the cache with the service worker. And what I've done is I've made a few little minor changes here. So we had previously this static cache where we were saving a bunch of files, primarily these ones. And I think I had a couple of images in there. I've also got another cache by the name image cache, and I'm putting the version number on that. So these are the two that I'm going to be using here, dynamic cache and the font cache we're going to use in the next video when we start talking about fetch. But for now, I've got two arrays, one for my HTML, CSS, and my JavaScript, and then another one that I'm using for my images. Now, the reason I chose to create a separate one for my images is that images are likely going to take up most of the storage in your website. Images are much bigger than text, so they're going to take up more memory. So I'm going to want to treat them a little bit differently, and we're going to look at how to do that. So we've got in my install script, so the add event listener for install, I'm still doing what I was before, where I'm looping through everything inside the static cache, calling add all, and adding in the assets array, which was this one, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That one is being added into the static cache, same as before. And remember, add all is the same as doing a fetch and a put to put it into the cache. But I've then chained on another then on the end of that promise. Now, this promise that we're talking about here is the open. We did open and then the then, where we have a reference to the cache itself. This is the static cache. And then after that, I've got another function that runs where I'm going to do another open call, but I'm going to open up the image cache. This is going to be my reference to the image cache, and I'm going to pass in the image assets array. Now, I only have two files here in my image folder, these two, but I'm duplicating them a bunch of times by adding on query strings. So I've got those two files, but I've got four copies of each one. And I'm putting all of those in a static cache into here. So in cache storage, we have the static cache. That's those files, the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And image cache is now all of these files. And this is where the bulk of the memory is going to be taken up. All right, so that's sort of the setup of what we've got. Um, now, the previous one, I was deleting the static cache if I had a new version of it. I'm still doing that, but inside activate, I've changed my filter method. This is the same code as I had in the previous video. All I've done is I've changed what's happening inside the filter function, where I'm checking for both the static and the image cache. If it doesn't match either of those, then it's one that I want to delete. So we do the map called caches delete. All right. now. I can put all the code having to deal with the caches in the service worker, but it's just going to be much easier for me to show the console logs and show what's happening by doing it in my main script. So that's where I'm going to have it now. In the future, we can integrate this stuff into the service worker. So when my page loads, I register the service worker and I'm going to call this function get cache size right here. We need to check inside the navigator object if there's something called storage. Storage represents the browser's storage for the current origin. So remember, you've got the protocol, you've got the port, you've got whatever the domain name is, whether it's localhost or www.abc.com, whatever that is, all those things together make up an origin. And depending on the browser that you're using, there's going to be a little bit of a variation on how much memory you get. So I've got a link and all these links that I've got up here that I'm going to show you, they're down in the description if you want to take a look at them yourself. Basically, 
Chrome is going to let you use 80% of the total disk space, and one single origin is allowed to use up to 60% of that total space. So if I'm only going to one website all the time, I can use up to 60% of the available space, but the browser is allowed to use 80%. Internet Explorer, we're not doing progressive web apps there, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, we're not going to be doing much with service workers for IE10. Um, starting about a year ago, um, Edge started to be built on the Chromium platform, which means Edge is going to be following these. Firefox, 50% of the available disk space, so the free disk space, so whatever memory you've got available on your computer, half of that is the maximum for the browser. And it, does, it doesn't work with just origins, but what it does is it looks at origin groups. So all the variations on a top level domain. So all these together are allowed to use up to two gigabytes. Safari, um, according to this article, uh, they couldn't find any official documentation on it, but it seems to be about one gig. And that's for the entire browser. When it gets to that limit, it's going to prompt the user to add on 200, increment, 200 megabyte increments. The only variation here with Safari is when you create PWAs, so progressive web apps, that's going to give you a brand new storage container. So that's another gig that you're allowed to use specifically for that PWA. Um, I also have up here, if you go to the Can I Use website, if you're looking for support for the stuff that I'm going to be talking about, uh, if you search for storage, web storage, this is local storage and session storage. The storage API that we're going to be talking about now, um, the storage API has to do with every kind of storage. If we come in here to the application tab, local storage, session storage, index DB, cookies, cache storage, all those together make up this tab right here, storage. So it's all these things combined. This is how much memory this origin is taking up right now. Most of it is going to be in these two caches right here. You can see the two caches are taking up almost all of it. Index DB, there's 13K, 7K for the service worker. It's really just the images that are taking up all of this. Now, we can use the storage tab to clear out any or all of these. WebSQL is no longer an active standard. It still runs in a couple browsers, but it's going to be deprecated. Application cache has been officially deprecated and is going to be removed probably in the near future from browsers. This was the pre-service worker way of doing the types of things that we're doing in the, with the service workers. So we have the storage API that deals with this. It's the fact that there is this common storage API approach for saving the data and dividing it up into each of these different categories. So I think the official spec right here, the storage standard, if you want to go through that, what they're talking about is, okay, you've got a browser. That's your shed. Inside the shed, you've got shelves. Each of these things is a shelf. Inside of there, there's buckets, which represent the various domains. And then inside of there, there's bottles, which are the actual data. So they have their analogy for how the, this is to be organized. The official spec says local storage and session storage, you're only allowed to have five megabytes for each one of these. The local storage is going to stay as long as they can keep it. Session storage is only for the current sessions session. So it's two separate five megabyte containers. That's what the spec says. The spec also says to all of the user agents, all the browsers, that they should make their best efforts to manage it. Um, they should try to make it protected information. So you don't want to give out exact numbers. You give estimates for numbers on how much storage is used. And the reason for that is they don't want people to be able to uh, fingerprint or track people based on the information that's coming back from the storage API. Okay, so we have all these different things. Um, the browser spec for storage API says, make your best efforts to maintain this information. Um, 
Recently, there has also been additions to the storage API with the storage manager. Now the storage manager comes with an estimate method and a persist method. The estimate method we're going to try out here. It's supported in uh, Firefox and Chrome, but not in Safari. Same thing with persist. Um, estimate manager is going to tell us the numbers that we're looking at here. So it's going to give me this total number and it's going to give me how much I'm using. So I can calculate a percentage if I want. The persist method right here. Um, the spec says, hey, make your best efforts to manage this and try and divide up the storage based on how popular a website is, how often a person is going to that website, how frequently they're saving things in the cache or local storage and so on. So use that information to figure out your method for divvying up the storage amongst all the websites that this browser is visiting. Persist means that you're going to try to ask for permission for your website to have its storage treated as persistent. So something that's of higher priority that doesn't get deleted. Um, when you create a PWA, you're sort of raising that level anyway, but we're going to look at these two methods. Okay, so let's go back to the console. Let's jump back into our code and take a look at this. So navigator, storage, that's the storage API, great. If inside of navigator.storage we have estimate, we can now say, hey, I want to know what is available. This will return a promise to me, which is going to have those two numbers. The inside of here, it's going to give me an object back and it's going to have two properties, usage and quota those two numbers right there. We're going to use these two numbers. Um, I'm going to convert them to kilobytes. The numbers that come back are in bytes. Okay. And there it is. So using this number of kilobytes of this, this was our 1.2 megabytes that we had of the 300 uh, gigabytes that we had available to us. So we've got tons of space on this computer. Um, and this could be something like if you've got a lot of storage that's being used up, you might want to make a decision based on that to delete files out of a cache. Um, and just to show you the other one. So we've got, this is the total and current usage of that total. If you want to try and make it persistent, if we've got the um, storage and the estimate methods available, then we're probably going to have um, the persist method as well. And there we go. So yes, the browser is going to grant me permission to keep this data stored as persistent. So we've got a, a greater chance of keeping it. Now, this is not available in as many places The uh, as the estimate. Uh, like I was saying, Firefox and Chrome are both going to give me these things. Um, Safari, not so, not so much, but that's okay. This may not be something that you want to use in terms of how much storage am I taking up. It could be useful at some point for really large files, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at individual files so I've got all of this right here about the storage API. Now I want to look at individual files. So we're going to open up and we could look at any one of our caches. I'm going to look at the image cache. So I'll come over here. It's this one right here, the one with all the JPEGs. This is the one that I'm going to look at and I want to find out how much storage is actually inside of there. So the image cache dash two is the name. And I did write out the whole word. Image cache two, that's the one. And we get a cache object back. That is going to be all of the um, files inside that cache we're going to have access to. So I'm going to call the match all method. We can, with match all, 
provide parameters. So I can come in here and say, okay, I'm looking for a match to this. There's some options that we can pass in as well. These options where we're allowed to say, okay, ignore the query string or ignore the very header. Um, there's a few other, there's three options that we can pass in. I'm just going to leave them as a comment down here at the bottom. And those are the default values. So search is the query string. So if you want to ignore the query string when you're matching everything, if you want to ignore the method, is it put, is it post, is it head, is it um, post, is it delete? Whatever the method is, if you want to ignore that, if you've got multiple ones that are saved there, but they had different methods, we could do that. And ignore very, there's a very header, um, which has to do with how the browser handles uh, different versions of files. So these are all things that you can pass in as options here. You can change these between true and false. I want to match everything in my cache. I'm not going to say ignore anything. I just want all the files. So I'm just going to call match all with no parameters passed in. It is then going to pass back to me an array. It's an array of response objects. Now I want to loop through those and I'm going to add up the size of each one of those. So we'll have a total variable, I'm going to start off at zero and then we're just going to keep adding to that total as we loop through them. So we've got matches for each. It's just an array. It doesn't matter what the things are inside the array. It is just an array. And for each one of those response objects, I'm going to have to look at it and find out, does it have a content length header? If it does, get the value of that and add it to our total. And remember, all your headers, doesn't matter what the value is, those are going to be strings. So if they are a numeric value and you want to be treating it as a numeric value, then you should call parse int on it or some other method to convert it to a number. And we're just going to write out as we loop through this, each one of the names. When we're done our loop, we will have the total size. There we go. So this is something that you can use to decide if you want to delete. Once I reached a certain total or a certain size, I can decide, okay, I'm going to delete the oldest images in here, or maybe I'm going to sort them by the size. You can do that as well. You can do a sort. This is just an array. So you can do a custom sort based on the value of that property and then sort them from largest to smallest and then delete the biggest files. And there we go. So adding size for each of these, we went through the entire cache. Total size in the cache is 558,000 bytes. So 550K. And we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so eight, that's everything in the cache. All right, so that is it. That is how you would determine the size, and then you've got a total. You can use that to decide what you want to keep. Completely up to you. But I did this inside of my app.js because it was easy to show uh, in the console. But typically, I would do this sort of handling inside my service worker, inside here, the fetch event listener. So go to the cache, get it. If I don't have it, I'm going to do a fetch call, retrieve it from the server, bring it back and add it to the cache. I need to decide which cache I'm going to put it into. And then I can decide, do I want to test a certain cache, see if it's too big, and if so, delete files. All right, so next video coming up is going to be on the fetch listener and using the fetch API inside of service workers. So hope you come back for that. If you have any questions about this one, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.